Warren Edward Buffett is a business entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist from the United States. He is currently the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, and is regarded as one of the world's most successful investors, with a net worth of about $101.1 billion, as of October 2021, making him the 10th wealthiest person on the planet. Here are seven stock market investing strategies, shared by the legendary investor himself. Some people should not own stocks at all because they just get too upset with price fluctuations. If you're going to do dumb things because your stock, a stock goes down, you shouldn't own a stock at all. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what are dumb things? Selling a stock? Yeah, as it goes selling down? a stock because it goes down. I mean, if, 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 you know, if, if, if you buy your house at $20,000 and somebody comes along the next day and says, I'll pay you 15, you don't sell it because the quote's 15. <laughs> you look at the house or whatever it may be. It, it, but, some people are not actually emotionally or psychologically fit to own stocks, but I think there are more of them would be if you get educated on what you're really buying, which is part of a business. Uh, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger, I'm Mark Rabinov from Melbourne, Australia. I just wanted to ask you, how do you judge the right margin of safety to use when investing in various common stocks. For example, in a dominant, long-standing, stable business, would you demand a 10% margin of safety? And if so, how would you increase this in a weaker business? Thank you. We, we, we favor the businesses where we really think we know the answer. And therefore, if a business gets to the point where we think the industry in which it operates, the competitive position uh, or anything is, is so chancy that we can't really come up with a figure, we don't really try to compensate for that sort of thing by having some extra large margin of safety. We really go on, try to go on to something that we understand better. So if we buy something like C's Candy as a business or Coca-Cola as a stock, uh, we don't think we need a huge margin of safety because we don't think we're gonna be wrong about our, uh, about our assumptions in any material way. Uh, what we really want to do is buy a business that's a great business, which means a business is going to earn a high return on capital employed for a very long period of time and where we think the management will treat us right. And we don't have to mark those down a lot uh, when we find those factors. We'd love to find them when they're selling at 40 cents on the dollar, but we will buy those at much closer to a dollar on the dollar. We don't like to pay a dollar on the dollar, but we'll pay something close. Uh, and if we really get to something, you know, when we see a great business, it's like if you see some, somebody walk in the door and you don't know whether they weigh 300 pounds or 325 pounds, you still know they're fat, right? You know? And so if we see something where we know it's fat financially, we don't worry about being precise and if we can come in in that particular example at the equivalent of 270 pounds, we'll feel good. But if we find, if we find something where the competitive aspects are, it's just the nature of the business that you really can't see out five or 10 or 20 years because that's what investing is, is seeing out. You don't get paid for what's already happened. You only get paid for what's going to happen in the future. The past is only useful to you in the extent to which it gives you insights into the future. And sometimes the past doesn't give you any insights into the future. And in other cases, like the stable business that you, uh, you postulated, um, it probably does give you a pretty good guideline as to what's going to happen in the future. And you don't need a huge margin of safety. You, you should have something that you all should, always should feel you're getting a little more than what, uh, what it's worth. And there are times when we've been able to buy wonderful businesses at a quarter of what they're worth. But we haven't seen those. Well, we saw it in Korea here recently. But you don't see those uh, sort of things uh, very often. And does that mean you should sit around and hope they come back for 10 or 15, you know, wait 10 or 15 years. That's not the way we do it. If we can buy good businesses at a reasonable valuation, we're going to keep doing it. Charlie? Yeah, you're, 
that margin of safety concept boils down to getting more value than you're paying. And that value can exist in a lot of different forms. If you're paid four to one on something that's an even money proposition, why well, that's a value proposition too. Uh, it, it's high school algebra. And people who don't know how to use high school algebra should take up some other activity. So this time I went back, uh, actually to 1942, when I bought my first stock as an illustration of all the things that have happened since 1942. We've had, we've had uh, 14 presidents, seven Republicans, seven Democrats. We've had, we've had world wars. We had 9-11. We had the Cuban Missile Crisis. We have, a, we have all kinds of things. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, which is buy an index fund and, 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 and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore, just like you would do if you bought a farm. You just buy the farm and let the, let the tenant farmer run it for you. And I pointed out that if you'd put $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and I paused for a moment to let the audience try and guess how much it amount to, and it would come to $51 million now. And the only thing you had to really believe in then is that America would win the war and that America would progress as it has ever since 1776 and that American business, if America moved forward, American business would move forward. You didn't have to worry about what stock to buy. You didn't have to worry what day to get in and out. You didn't, you didn't know the Federal Reserve would exist, <laughs> whatever it might be. And uh, uh, America works. So I would pick a broad index, but I wouldn't toss a chunk in at any one time. I would do it over a period of time because the, the very nature of index funds is that you are saying, I think America's business is going to do well over or reasonably well over a long period of time, but I don't know enough to pick the winners and I don't know enough to pick the winning times. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know enough to pick the winning times. Occasionally I think I know enough to pick a winner, but not very often. And I certainly can't pick winners by going down through the whole list and saying this is a winner and this isn't and so on. So the important thing to do, if you have an overall feeling that business is a reasonable place to have your money over a long period of time, is to invest over a long period of time and not make any bet implicitly by putting a big chunk in at a given time. My first question would be, um, yeah, what should I invest in next? Can I have some tips? I, I think somebody like LeBron, and we've talked about it, but I, I think... You and LeBron have talked about it? Uh, occasionally. Uh, I think, actually, if through the rest of his career, and, and beyond in terms of earning power then, uh, just making monthly investments in a, in a low-cost index fund makes a lot of sense. I think that somebody in his position ought to have a significant cash reserve, and whatever makes him comfortable, and then beyond that, owning a piece of America, a diversified piece, bought over time, held for 30 or 40 years, it's, it's bound to do well. And the income will go up over the years, and, and, and there's really nothing to worry about. Your favorite time to own a stock is forever, yet you sold McDonald's and Disney after not owning them for long. How do you decide when to hold forever and when to sell? And also, are you and Mr. Munker wearing Fruit of the Looms? Charlie? <laughs> I, I think I better answer the question. I can answer unequivocally, I am wearing Fruit of the Loom. And uh, I'm not sure whether Charlie wears underwear, do you? I have a... <laughs> I haven't bought any new underwear in a long time, and therefore I'm inappropriately attired. He's waiting for a discount. Don't let him kid you. <laughs> well, the answer, it's a very good question about selling. I mean, we, it's not our natural inclination to sell. And on the other hand, uh, and, and we have held the Washington Post stock since 1973. Uh, I've never sold a share of Berkshire. 
uh, having bought the first shares in 1962. Um, and we've held Coke stock since 1988. We've held Gillette stock since 1989. Held American Express stock since uh, 1991. Um, we had actually previously been an American Express one in, in the 60s in Disney. So there, there are companies we're familiar with. We generally sell, well, we would sell if we needed money for something else, but that has not been the problem in the last 10 or 15 years. That 40 years ago, my sales were all because I found something that I liked even better. I hated to sell what I sold, but I, but I also didn't want to borrow money. So I uh, would reluctantly sell something that I thought was terribly cheap to buy something that was even cheaper. Uh, that w those were the times when I had more ideas than money. Now I've got more money than ideas, and that's a different equation. So now we sell really when we think that we've, when we're reevaluating the the economic characteristics of the business. In other words, if you take them, don't want to name names, but take 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 a stock we've sold of some sort. We probably had one view of the long-term competitive advantage of the company at the time we bought it and we may have modified that that doesn't mean we think that the company is going into some disastrous period or anything remotely like that we think mcdonald's has a fine future we think disney has a fine future and there are others but we probably don't think that their competitive advantage uh is as strong as we might have thought as we thought it was when we initially made the decision. That may mean that we were wrong when we made the decision originally. It may mean that we're wrong now and that, it, and that their strengths are every bit as uh, what they were before. Uh, but for one reason or another, we, we, we think that the strengths may have been eroded to some degree. I, a classic case on that would be the newspaper industry generally, for example. I mean, in 1970, if Charlie and I were looking at the newspaper business, we felt it was about as impregnable a franchise as could be found. We still think it's quite a business, but we do not think the franchise in 2002 is the same as it was in 1970. We do not think the franchise of a network television station in 2002 is the same as it was in 1965. And those beliefs change quite gradually and 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 who knows whether they're precise you know whether they're right even but but that is the reason in general that we sell now if we got into some terribly cheap market we might sell some things that we thought were cheap to buy something even cheaper after we would bought lots and lots of equities but that's not the occasion right now Charlie uh, nothing to add he's been practicing for weeks <laughs> Our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged perhaps with the management or we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way. I mean, and that happens. So, but we're not going to sell simply because it looks too high in, in all likelihood. I mean, that, I, you can't make that 100 percent, but it's, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's the principle under which we're operating. We, we're generating right now. Five billion of cash a year, at least. So it's a hundred million bucks every week, and uh, you know, just not. We've been talking here half an hour, and I haven't done a damn thing. Uh, so uh, it's, you know, the, the real question is, how do you put it out intelligently? And and if we were selling things, it'd be just that much more. So there may there might there may come a time when that would change.